Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge Galaxy to rediscover the basics with Mayank Tiwari. A premier coaching and training channel dedicated to metallurgy studies and consultancy. Established to cater the needs of students, degree, diploma and AMIIM metallurgy competitive and recruitment exams for GATE, SAIL and various other government and private sector companies, metallurgical industries, working and aspiring professionals and whosoever seeking knowledge and information about various subjects and topics of metallurgy, ferrolize, operational process optimization, productivity improvement analysis, etc. To impart practical industrial knowledge as per your specific requirements via tailor-made training sessions for your colleagues, employees and students, please contact me on knowledgegalaxy26 at the rate gmail.com or whatsapp me on plus 9199074101 for scheduling and organizing the sessions at your place or via video conferencing. My dear friends, nowadays technology has improved so much that physical distance, actual physical distance doesn't matter anymore. You can get all your doubts cleared by sitting at your home, at your comfort zone, just by contacting me, uh, contacting me over WhatsApp or phone so that for your benefit, please do contact me for any of your doubts. My dear friends, I have made so many videos which are available on my YouTube channel. So I request you to visit my channel regularly and repeatedly and watch all the videos available there so that you can gain maximum knowledge about the subject and topics and also request you to watch all my videos from start to finish so that you can gain the maximum and complete knowledge about the topic. My dear friends, as you know that training is costly but not to train is still costlier and when you are not having complete knowledge or don't get any information about the topic which you need to know so you can contact me if you don't find anyone who can help you to clear your doubts you do contact me as soon as possible and so right now in this video I am discussing about my dear friends in this video, I am going to discuss about energy, economy and environment. These are very much important aspects of all industrial revolutions and civilization. So we have to always consider and keep in mind all these things, energy, economy and environment. So in this present video, I will be discussing in detail what are the importance of energy, economy and environment what are their interrelations and how we can contribute in a positive manner for the betterment of human civilization by utilizing in an effective way energy, economy and environment. So let us start the presentation for today. First of all, let me introduce what is the topic. First, energy. Energy is the whole soul responsible for the existence of each and every living and dead substances. The universe can never be even imagined without energy. It is the energy which, is, which has created each and everything we know and even numerous things that we don't know till now. Energy is the only thing that is forever as is very precisely formulated in the form of first law of thermodynamics or the law of conservation of energy that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it only changes its forms. My dear friends, always do remember this thing that energy can never, neither be created nor destroyed, it only changes its forms. 
whatever we are able to see feel and even beyond that they are all forms of energy only energy is the driving force for each and every activity of the nature many forms of energy known to humans are first solar energy next gravitational and geothermal energy next magnetic energy static energy kinetic energy molecular energy nuclear energy tidal energy electric energy mechanical energy hydro energy wind energy and many more other forms all these forms of energy can be grouped in two broad categories based on their availability they are first renewable or non conventional energy sources and second non renewable or conventional energy sources my dear friends just to interrupt you all here i would like to emphasize on some special important aspect of knowledge galaxy here specialized subject wise coaching classes and topic wise doubts clearing are available i am available for all of you to clear all your doubts and especially for diploma engineering metallurgy and mechanical students indian institute of metals that is iim part 1 and part 2 and competitive and recruitment exams for gate seal and various other government and private sector companies metallurgical industries working and aspiring professionals here i would like to emphasize that whatever queries and doubts you are having in your mind regarding any any subject or topic of metallurgy or any other ferrolas production operation maintenance so you can contact me for getting your doubts cleared i will try to provide you accurate knowledge and to the best possible extent at the very shortest period of time so that you can gain your knowledge clear all your doubts so that you can grow in your career whether it is academic career whether it is of professional career and so that you can develop and grow so to continue with here complete syllabus coverage for the students aspiring to appear in the forthcoming semester exams that is december or june i will be providing you all so please contact me on knowledge galaxy 26 at the rate gmail.com or whatsapp me on plus 9199071 4401 for scheduling and organizing the classes or getting informations to clear your doubts via video conferencing call or whatsapp my dear friends you might have encountered encountered that may you might have been having many of the doubts regarding process technology why they are doing why it is done how it is done so and if you don't find any answer to them and nobody is there to guide you properly so my dear friends i am here available to guide you all to make you know and grow and so that you don't have any doubts related to your process products technology syllabus and i will make sure that all of your doubts get clarified and you know the topic and subject very well and completely so again let's move on coming back to track the first group consists of that energy sources which are available in the world since the inception of the universe and will be available till the end of the universe so they are called renewable energy sources these are actually inexhaustible these energy sources were not used to a large extent until the beginning of the 20th century the most beneficial part of these energy sources is that they don't generate 
any harmful pollutants during and after their utilization. Nowadays, their importance is very well understood by all across the world and their usage is increasing day by day and is being encouraged for even better more and more usage all across the world. The second group consists of dead energy sources which are known to humans since the beginning of the humanity and some of them are discovered by the humans during the development of humanity but are getting exhausted at a very fast rate than their generation rate and hence will not last forever. All these second group energy sources have originated from the first group energy sources. They generate many harmful pollutants during and after their utilization. Energy is a relative term. Whatever be the form, it is measured against some specific standard form under standard conditions. So, I hope it is very much clear that energy is a relative term. The absolute energy of anything can never be measured. As explained by Dr. Albert Einstein, every matter can be converted into energy by the formula E is equal to mc square. This is the famous formula given by Dr. Albert Einstein where all the symbols have their usual meanings. All living bodies use energy in many forms for their various activities during their life and become source of energy after their death. In fact, anybody is said to be dead when it stops functioning due to unavailability of energy. Life on earth is made possible by energy from the sun which arrives mainly in the form of visible light. About 30% of the sunlight is scattered back into the space by the outer atmosphere and the balance 70% reaches the earth's surface which reflects it in the form of infrared radiations. The escape of slow moving infrared radiations are delayed by the greenhouse gases. A thicker blanket of greenhouse gases traps more infrared radiations and increases the earth's temperature. Without greenhouse gases, the earth would be too cold to live. The humans have been using the natural environment since their inception for their surveillance and growth. The natural environment is capable of maintaining uh, the balance in it by itself. Due to lack of knowledge, ignorance and negligency, the humans have disturbed the natural environment balance by unthoughtful, inefficient, uneconomic and unplanned usage of energy. CO2 is the responsible for 60% of the enhanced greenhouse effects. Even a small increase in Earth's temperature will be accompanied by changes in climate such as cloud cover, precipitation, wind patterns and duration of seasons. Currently, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere are rising by over 10% every 20 years. <coughs> environment. Now let us discuss about environment. It is defined as each and everything that surrounds us at a given time and place. My dear friends, always keep in mind the definition of environment 
that it is defined as each and everything that surrounds us at a given time and place. Since everything is a form of energy, we are always surrounded by energy in various forms as our environment. Various pollutants like oxides of sulfur, that is SOX, oxides of nitrogen, that is NOx, and chlorofluorocarbons, that is CFC, CO, that is carbon monoxide, CO2, carbon dioxide, volatile organic compounds, that is WOX, hydrocarbons, benzene, butadiene, airborne particulate matters, that is APMS, and many more pollutants are generated during and after the usage of non-renewable energy sources, basically fossil fuels. They contribute to a very large extent towards the environmental pollution and imbalance. Several varieties of air pollutants have known or suspected effects on all living and non-living substances and the environment. These air pollutants are basically the products of combustion of fossil fuels. These air pollutants can create problems not only near to their origin but also far away from that. As they are able to travel very long distances and can stay in the air for very long duration of time, since their settling rate fluctuates very frequently and very easily due to changes in the wind speed and direction. They are also capable of chemically reacting with the atmosphere to produce secondary long-range pollutants such as acid rain and ozone. Nowadays, in both the developing and developed countries, the major threat to clean air is posed by traffic emissions. A wide variety of pollutants, mainly carbon monoxide, that is CO, oxides of nitrogen, NOx, volatile organic compounds, wax, and particulates are being emitted by petrol and diesel driven vehicles which have an increasing impact on urban as well as semi-urban air quality. <coughs> In addition, photochemical reactions resulting from the action of sunlight on NOx and wax from vehicles leads to the formation of ozone, a secondary long-range pollutant which impacts in rural areas often far away from the original emission sites. The other long-range pollutant is acid rain which is very much influenced by vehicles NOx emissions. The effects of acid rain are as follows. Acidification of lakes, water bodies, streams and soils. Direct and indirect effects, release of metals, example of aluminium which washes away the plant nutrients. Killing of wildlife that is trees, crops, aquatic plants and animals. Decay of building materials and paints, statues and sculptures. Health problems that is respiratory, burning skin and eyes. So these are the major bad effects of acid rains. Industrial and domestic pollutant sources combined with their impact on air quality tend to be steady state or increasing over time. However, traffic pollution problems are worsening worldwide. This problem is particularly severe in developing countries where vehicles pollution is increasing because population is increasing 
at a very fast rate limited infrastructures poor engine or emission control technologies and also limited provision for maintenance or vehicle regulations my dear friends i hope now you can correlate why nowadays the electric vehicles are more preferred and being used worldwide so that we can contribute for the better maintenance of environment so not to produce environmental pollutants so i request you all to use more and more electric vehicles as we are also in our country starting to use more and more electric vehicles <coughs> in all parts of the world the major historic air pollution problem has typically been high levels of smoke and so2 the combustion product of sulfur containing fossil fuels like coal and petroleum products which are burned for both domestic as well as industrial usage smokes the result of combined effects of black smoke sulfate or acid aerosol and fog have been seen in many parts of the world until few decades back and still occur in many cities in developing countries <clears throat> this problem has reduced significantly in developed countries over recent decades as a result of changing fuel use patterns the increasing usage of cleaner fuels like natural gas and the implementation of effective smoke and emission control policies <clears throat> toxic organic micro pollutants that is tomps are produced by the incomplete combustion of the fuels they comprise a complex range of chemicals some of which although they are emitted in very small quantities are highly toxic or carcinogenic compounds in this category includes poly aromatic hydrocarbons that is pas second poly chlorinated biphenyls that is pcbs next dioxins and furans the humans have polluted the natural environment very severely that now we are facing the energy crisis the conventional energy sources are now getting consumed and exhausted day by day due to increased rapid unthoughtful inefficient uneconomic and unplanned usage the environment gets polluted when the imbalance in energy rises and the environment doesn't get time to bring balance in energy the energy economy and environment are all interrelated terms their interrelations is such that every change in one affects the other the economy of any country is evaluated by the energy consumption and environment of that country the country which consumes energy in an efficient manner its economy is very strong having its environment better and healthier than any other country which consumes energy in inefficient manner energy intensity is energy consumption per unit of gdp energy intensity indicates the development stage of the country energy conservation and energy efficiency are distinct but related concepts energy conservation can be achieved when growth of energy consumption is reduced and it is measured in physical terms energy conservation can therefore be the result of several processes or developments such as productivity increase or technological progress 
on the other hand energy efficiency is achieved when energy intensity in a product process or area of production or consumption is reduced without affecting the output consumption or comfort levels promotion of energy efficiency will contribute to energy conservation and is therefore an integral part of energy conservation promotional policies the economy in energy consumption shall always be practiced and monitored in each and every activity so as to strengthen the economy and environment of the world for the survival and existence of life on the earth for a longer duration of time my dear friends i hope my message to all of you is very much clear and i also hope that i have explained in a detailed manner the interrelations of energy economy and environment we all should always contribute in a positive manner for the betterment of all these three factors we should always enforce to reduce energy consumptions and to improve the environment and economy of our nation and our world and with this i raise my voice for the current presentation dear friends i am providing you all the informations free of cost which are available in my youtube channel so do help me by watching all my videos do subscribe my channel regularly visit and repeatedly visit my channel do watch all my videos contains like the content share with your friends and so that i also get motivated from each one of you as you subscribe to my channel i am very much thankful to all my subscribers who believe in me have subscribed my channel like my content so to motivate me further please do subscribe my channel increase the subscriber count share with your friends so that others can also gain the knowledge and my dear friends all if you subscribe my channel this will motivate me to do further better so i hope you like the content and found the video worth so again request you to please don't forget to like share and subscribe the channel also remember to press the bell icon so that you can get the notification of the new videos promptly my dear friends here if you want to advertise about your product services or company or anything else for gaining popularity in my channel so you can contact me so that i can put your content for advertisement in my videos forthcoming videos so it will be a good platform to advertise so do contact me as soon as possible